Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Jody James and I'm here at the offices of the Florida Cannabis Action Network. And today we are talking about campaign 2020 or actually election results 2020 if you want to be specific. Uh, the elections come and gone and of course we still don't know who the president will be. Uh, many of the states haven't been certified, but Florida's elections turned out pretty much the way we expected. There were a couple surprises in the Florida House. We lost three Democratic seats that belonged to four and five Leaf uh, Democrats. Those were some upsets. We're particularly going to miss Representative Jennifer Webb, who while she was only a four Leaf, she was a four Leaf because she was pro-legalization, but she really was focusing on uh, broader uh, criminal justice issues. And certainly criminal justice issues is where we're going to be talking over the next few years. Um, when it comes to medical marijuana, as you can see on the chart, uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, we picked up some five LEAF candidates, and for those of you who aren't familiar with our candidate ratings, uh, five leaves is kind of that guy or that gal. A five leaf candidate has self-identified as being pro-cannabis or has um, otherwise been identified as a legalizer at some point during their legislative careers. Four leaves go a little bit short of legalization but have introduced a good bill. Now these leaf ratings are going to change and what you're seeing, we actually went back to an original rating that we were using with Kathy Jordan uh, back in the day. What you should be seeing now is 32 no ratings and those are the seats that are empty and this is for those of you who haven't been uh, catching up with Florida Cannabis Action Network, what you're seeing is actually a seating chart that we have converted for our purposes. If you've been watching CNN or Fox, you may have seen this with the uh, U.S. Senate or the U.S. House. Well, this is our Florida House of Representatives seating chart. And our um, the seats in white, those are going to be no rating. Uh, every year, all 120 members of the Florida House and Senate have to run for re-election. The ones that are re-elected um, can serve up to eight years in the Florida House. So when they've served their eight years, they're term limited. About every election cycle, we lose about a third of the Florida House of Representatives. It gives us a lot of continuity, but it also means that every two years, quite literally uh, a quarter of the entire Florida legislative body of the House body is brand new. And some of them we find out how they feel about uh, cannabis policy during our questionnaires because we question all of the uh, candidates. We were really excited as a matter of fact in seat 102 we were able to find out oh I'm sorry in seat 107 we were able to find out that Christopher Benjamin considers himself pro-cannabis. He's newly elected so he's not one of the 30. He got added to our five leaves. I'm pretty excited about the way the leaves are breaking down at this point. We have, um, again, 32 that we don't know anything about. But I was doing a little bad, a bit of math uh, before we started, and we actually have 54 folks who we could easily say are pro-cannabis. Now, they're 60, uh, half is 60, so we don't quite have half of the Florida legislature saying that they are, at the very least, pro-medical marijuana. So back to our charts. Uh, the ones in white have no information about them. If um, you're interested in finding out who those 32 are, you can go into our blog posts. Uh, we're updating the blog post now that the elections happened so that you can go in, find out who's who in the zoo, find out who represents you and how we've rated them. Uh, <coughs> the yellow, uh, I, I want to kind of focus on those 44 yellows. 44 yellows, that's a two-leaf rating, and a two-leaf rating means that they have voted with the majority. They didn't vote to oppose smokable marijuana, but they haven't stood up for us. And that's a really high percentage. Those twos could go either way. 
we can't count on them. They're not going to vote for us unless the majority tells them to. They're not going to stand up for us. They're not going to introduce amendments and they're not going to introduce bills. So those 44, that's a pretty high percentage of folks that we really can't count on. And what makes the difference is you. Uh, these lawmakers, they're just people and they are going to help people they know. Everybody has heard of Charlotte Figgy at this point. Well, our own Charlotte Figgy is a young woman by the name of Rayanne. And Rayanne was a neighbor of Matt Gates, Congressman Matt Gates, at the time was a member of the Florida House. If it had not been for Matt Gates and his relationship with Rayanne, Rihanna, we never would have had our low THC bill which is the start of the program that so many patients, more than 400,000, are enjoying right now. So it was a pretty interesting election cycle. We know that um, Daniel Perez self-identified as being pro-cannabis when he was elected in 2016, and that's the good news. Uh, Daniel Perez is a Republican, five leaf. He is one of the young freshmen, or was a young freshman, but he was nominated to be the Speaker of the House should he stay in the Florida legislature. So he's been given the important role of judiciary chair. We're very excited about that. But you have to be cognizant of those 10 zero leaves and four leaves. And we really have to be careful about that. The Speaker of the House is considered a two leaf. That would be Speaker Chris Sproul. But he has orchestrated some pretty damaging presentations uh, as speaker designate. We do not expect um, Chris Sproul to be a progressive when it comes to cannabis policy. All in all, the House is going to be a mixed bag this year. Our Democrats are more and more becoming four and five leaves, and they have committed to introducing bills. But of course, with a heavy Republican majority, the chances are good that unless the Republicans pick this up as an issue that is important to them, we're going to be fighting tooth and nail to get some of the reforms that we need this legislative session. Florida Cannabis Action Network is going to be sending out a questionnaire. If you haven't already seen it in your inbox, be sure to sign up at www.flcan.org to make sure you're on our email list. Not everything we do on YouTube and Facebook gets replicated on our uh, email list and vice versa, so make sure you're checking us out everywhere. Um, we're pretty excited about some of the folks who were elected. We certainly appreciated getting Kelly Skidmore in District 81. She'd been looking for that seat for some quite some time. She comes to us as a four-leaf candidate. Uh, again, I mentioned Christopher Benjamin, who is newly elected as a seven. Now, our newly elected uh, freshmen aren't going to have a lot of influence, but newly elected freshmen, sooner or later, they become part and parcel to the leadership. Uh, we'd like to congratulate Ralph Masulo, uh, Representative Dr. Dr. Representative Ralph Masulo has been a friend to the cannabis movement, particularly the hemp movement, since he was a freshman and this year he'll be taking on the chair of state affairs. Colleen Burton is going to be the head of health and human services. So a lot of what we do in the legislature is going to go through Colleen Burton and Daniel Perez. So that's kind of what it looks like. Again, a mixed bag. We were happy to see some of our uh, five Leafs return. Congratulations to Anthony Sabatini. Uh, I want to do a shout out to Travaris McCurdy. Travaris won his seat. Uh, that would be House District seat 46 unopposed. Travaris was a legislative aide to um, uh, Senator Randy Bracey. Travaris came to us. We knew he was going to be uh, a five leaf and a champion for the cannabis movement. If you are not going to become a single issue voter, if you have a party affiliation or if you've already been thinking about who you're going to support, um, and maybe you uh, don't like all the candidates that are five leaves, the thing that we know is that in this state, it's really hard for 
the seats to change parties. If it's a Republican seat, it's a Republican seat. If it's a Democratic seat, it's a Democratic seat. What we need is to make sure that regardless of who the Republican is that's running or who the Democrat is that's running, that they understand cannabis policy and that they know somebody and they care about somebody who needs them to make substantial changes. You can be the next Ray Ann. We need people who are standing up. If you're interested in doing more, Florida Cannabis Action Network is a membership organization. Your dues are as little as $5 a month or $50 a year. And our legislative committee does not only our campaign screening and our candidate endorsements, but we go to Tallahassee every year and do a number of projects that culminate in uh, educating the legislature so that we can get better cannabis policies. This is it for today, and that's our house wrap, wrap up. My name is Jody James, and again, I'm with the Florida Cannabis Action Network. I'd like to thank our producer, Justice James, for being here in the studio and making this happen, and all of our sponsors and members for making sure that the Cannabis Action Network can be a sustaining voice for the cannabis consumer since 1998.